Now let's welcome our first uh, company guest of today, Sanofi, represented by Dr. Imin Turan, General Manager of Foundation Vietnam and Cambodia, Sanofi, and country lead for Sanofi Vietnam. Dr. Turan is a senior executive in pharmaceutical and biotech industry with a broad international and corporate experience spanning over Turkey, USA, South Korea, Southeast Asia, Russia, Israel, Iran, Central Asia, and Vietnam markets. Uh, he's a medical doctor who further studied business management. He has more than 25 years of experience in a broad range of roles in the pharmaceutical and vaccines industry, including global corporate functions and country cluster uh, management. Sanofi Vietnam belongs to Sanofi Group of Brands, which is a global group of innovative uh, healthcare solutions, providing life-changing treatments and protective vaccines to millions of people. In Vietnam, Sanofi has, uh, has been present in Vietnam for more than 70 years. So Dr. Turan, thank you for being, uh, being with us today. Would you like to share with us about the key uh, factors for such a long success of Sanofi in Vietnam? Thank you, Daisy. Thank you for the very kind uh, invitation. Uh, so as you heard, I am the country lead for Sanofi Vietnam. I am also the chairman of the pharma group, uh, which is representing 22 uh, multinational innovation based uh, innovation based uh, companies, uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies uh, coming from across the globe. And we are one of the loudest voices in, in advocacy. Uh, towards a more patient-friendly uh, and uh, and more business-conducive environment in Vietnam. So you can uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn through this uh, QR code. And if uh, after the meeting you have more questions, I would be happy to connect and answer any questions uh, that you may have. So um, I will speak a little bit about uh, about uh, Sanofi. Actually, uh, Daisy already already mentioned who we are. Uh, Sanofi is a, is a is a very large uh, pharmaceutical biopharmaceutical uh, company. We employ almost a hundred thousand people across the across the world, uh, coming from uh, 142 nationalities. We operate directly in a hundred countries, including Vietnam. But our healthcare solutions you can find them virtually in every country around the world. And we have 70 uh, manufacturing sites in 32 countries. Vietnam is again uh, one of those countries. And we have 20 research and development sites. One of our development sites is based in Vietnam. We operate on four distinct uh, global business units, depending on the type of, uh, type of uh, product that we have. It could be specialty care for rare diseases, for example, general prescription products, vaccine. And we have a lot of uh, consumer healthcare products as well. As for Vietnam, uh, yes, we are here for almost 70 years. Uh, we are a very large uh, company in Vietnam. We are an FIE with an I IRC and all the required uh, uh, investment certificates, as Carlo was explaining. Uh, we employ almost 1,200 people, uh, and 95 plus percent of these employees are Vietnamese. Uh, our head office is in, in Ho Chi Minh. We have a correspondence office in Hanoi. We also have a manufacturing site in Saigon High Tech Park, one of those uh, industrial, um, industrial parks that Carlo was, Carlo was talking about. Uh, there is a high tech park uh, in Saigon where our manufacturing uh, facility is, uh, is placed. Uh, we are also a highly recognized uh, employer with uh, a clear uh, employer uh, branding and employer uh, visibility in the Vietnam market. We have been uh, four years in a row top employer awarding in Vietnam and more than I think six, seven years uh, we are elected as the best place to work in Vietnam. So we are also externally uh, recognized as a, a, as a good employer, big employer developing people of Vietnam in the country. We also have a very large uh, economical footprint in the country. We employ 1,200 people, as I mentioned, 
but we made a, a economical uh, footprint analysis and actually we create almost 12,000 jobs in the country with our, with our indirect activity. So far, including FDI plus our other investments and the taxes we paid and the dividends we paid, uh, we have uh, brought uh, almost $260 million of investment. Our annual business is around 250 million euros. This year is going to exceed a little bit further. And, uh, and we have uh, about 4%, a little bit more than 4% uh, of market share in the total uh, Vietnam pharmaceutical market. So that's everything about Vietnam. And, uh, and uh, Sanofi is an example of uh, how a company, a multinational company can come here, create a footprint, create legal entities, even create a joint venture because one of our legal entities is a joint venture with the local company. So if you look at Vietnam uh, in a snapshot, uh, it's in a very nice location in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's, it's not a super uh, big, uh, I would say geography, but it's a very large from uh, South to North. And this creates distinct economic zones uh, in the country, of course, with a heavy uh, part in Hanoi and a heavy uh, economic activity in Ho Chi Minh, but also in, in places in between. It's a country of actually 63 countries in one, because you have some provinces and municipalities like Hanoi and, and Ho Chi Minh, Da Nang. Uh, and these uh, pro provinces, they have their own, uh, I would say, semi-autonomous uh, management when it comes to healthcare. So we have one federal ministry of health and we have 63 service of health, which is the sort of ministry of health uh, for these provinces. Uh, population is, is uh, roughly 100 million. I think soon it's going to touch the 100 million mark uh, uh, within this year, maybe next year. And uh, what you need to keep in mind is it's a, it's a very large labor force. It's a, it's a young uh, country actually. And unemployment rate is extremely low. And Vietnamese people, they are extremely industrious. Uh, if they don't find a job in a corporation, they will be doing something on the street. They will be riding a motorbike. Uh, basically, I mean, everybody is employed. Everybody is really striving to make a living uh, in the country. Uh, some of the advantages are more and more, there is an international integration uh, with a lot of uh, bilateral trade agreements, including Europe now since 2019. And we see that, uh, that this, uh, this uh, free trade agreement is creating a lot of additional trade between the, between the two parties. One thing we need to keep in mind as European companies is that the bilateral trade is growing and it's quite large now. I think it's reaching uh, probably 40 billion uh, mark, but it's a very unbalanced trade. There is a, there is a big trade deficit which is in favor of Vietnam. So Vietnam exports roughly, uh, roughly 12 billion, uh, imports roughly 12 billion of uh, European products and exports roughly 25, 30 billion uh, worth of products to Europe. Uh, but this uh, free trade agreement, it's in, it's in implementation now and, uh, and the European Commission and, uh, and the chief negotiators are continuously working on it uh, to, to improve its performance. Uh, what else can I say? Political stability is important one. This is a communist country. You need to know that there is one party, there is elections, uh, but stability with a single party and with routine elections and with ambitious governments coming to rule the country is keeping a very uh, strong focus on economical stability and growth. So this makes Vietnam a dynamic economy actually. And uh, there is a lot of focus on healthcare recently because there are issues I will talk about in healthcare. But also there is a very strong focus on uh, on climate, green growth, and uh, the European Chamber of Commerce is actually later this year having a, an activity on this one. Uh, so when you decide to invest in Vietnam, keep in mind that if you do something on the climate, on green energy, green green growth, this will be much appreciated by the government, whatever you do, whichever industry uh, you are working on. Uh, I think uh, Carlo mentioned about the industrial park, so I'm going to, I'm going to pass this uh, rather quickly. Uh, but since uh, 19, uh, 1987, there has been continuous development about foreign direct investment, encouraging foreign direct investments, giving incentives, signing uh, bilateral trade agreements, signing uh, free trade agreements. Vietnam is doing a lot in order to develop. 
And keep in mind that this is a 300 billion economy, uh, more or less in GDP, and it's more or less a 300 billion export country. So they are really reliant on manufacturing and trade activity and export in order to, uh, to drive the growth of the economy. And then um, if you look at the, uh, the GDP, GDP has been stably growing. These are six, 7% growth rates, 17 to 2019. These are enviable numbers. Uh, this is like the, let's say, former China. Then even 2020 and 2021, where the country was really suffering from COVID, all the borders were locked down. They lost almost all of their tourism income. Still, the, the economy has been growing. And this year, there are different forecasts, but we expect something between 65 to 7.5% range. So the economy is going back to growth, and we anticipate the, this growth uh, to continue in 23 and beyond with a stable, uh, I would say, inflation and uh, more or less a stable currency. You don't see the kind of huge fluctuations in currency here, which is easy for companies like us who are working on uh, or on, on foreign uh, currency-based uh, PNL statements uh, reporting to our management line. As I said, unemployment is, uh, is very low. It's actually top 10 in the world. And uh, one important point, if you are going to invest here, if you are planning to send some expats, being an expat myself, and having been an expat in many different countries in the world, I can say that this is an attractive destination. It's a comfortable country to come, live, very safe, uh, a good uh, healthcare system, um, and uh, for expats also uh, the schooling system is quite okay in terms of international schools. And in terms of the foreign direct investments, it's attracting a lot. And the full intention of the government these days is, is really to increase the foreign direct investment further in any kind of segment. I think the, um, the, 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 the chairman of the Italian, uh, Italian Chamber of Commerce was talking about Lego. Lego is bringing $1.1 billion of direct investment into the country. So this is the kind of levels uh, that we are really talking about. Then if I focus a little bit further on pharmaceuticals, uh, health expenditure, expenditure is about 6% of the GDP, uh, which is uh, lower compared to the Western part of the, of the world, uh, but it's average and it's uh, even uh, a little bit less than uh, some of other ASEAN countries. Pharma sector, uh, pharma market has been growing almost double digit. We had a hiccup last year because of the uh, very heavy lockdown. Uh, but we expect the, the market to go back to growth again, uh, close to uh, or even a little bit higher than double digits uh, as of uh, 2022. One thing is very important. Universal health care is very broad in Vietnam. Today, they have almost 90, 91% of the population in health care, health insurance universal. And the government has an intention to increase this to 95% in the coming uh, two, three years. So they really have an intention to protect their people, of course, this being a communist country again. Uh, the government also has a very big intent on uh, making Vietnam an innovation and manufacturing hub for pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceuticals. They have very clear plans. At, they don't have clear plans. They have a clear vision for this. And uh, just yesterday, I was joining a meeting in Hanoi with the uh, prime minister's office. So they are really working hard in order to find the right pathway in order to make this happen because some industries are quite developed here, textile, electronics, et cetera, pharmaceuticals, not so much. And as Vietnam will be competing with other markets in order to develop the country uh, as an innovation hub or in, as a manufacturing hub for advanced uh, medicines, uh, they are really having a keen focus on how to make this happen. Um, and then, of course, they are, they are trying to find ways to incentivize companies like us, companies like our members in the pharma group, uh, to make it happen, to, to find some uh, incentives. Now, let's speak a little bit about uh, how, uh, for the lack of a better term, how confusing it can be to do business in, in the healthcare space or, or, let's say, business in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is a layer of very bureaucratic uh, legislation. Of course, there is the constitution, and under the constitution, there is laws, then resolutions, 
than decisions, than decrees, than other decision by different, uh, different levels. And then there are circulars and joint circulars. So sometimes you believe that things are going to go in the right direction because the, the landscape is changing because there is a new law in place. And then you discover that, ah, the related decree has not happened. So for this decree to happen, that needs to be a decision. And you think the decision is there, but the decision still is not implemented because that, that it requires another order. So this is a, I would say, this is a very elegant and, uh, and meshed type of uh, policy making in Vietnam, uh, which is the mother of all the difficulties that we are facing in the in the healthcare space. The the good thing is the government is aware of this, and um, and the government is is really uh, trying to make things happen. And uh, one thing that I notice, having more than two years of experience in the country now, now is that if something is, let's say, hurting they find the solution to make it happen. Sometimes a bit late, uh, sometimes after uh, some uh, issues are faced, uh, but finally they make it happen. So one positive thing I can say about Vietnam and this all seemingly complex system is that yes, it is inefficient. Sometimes you may get surprised or frustrated uh, in different industries, very much so in, in healthcare, I can tell you. And these are things which are making our life not that easy when we do business. It could be about a labor scheme. It could be about some incentives, some, some investments that you have done some time ago. And it may come back again uh, with a different type of uh, shape and color to you and to surprise you. All of these things are things that we face on a regular basis in Vietnam. However, one thing which is very, very positive is the Vietnamese authorities, they are very open for dialogue. They are ready to listen. They are ready to update things. And they are really ready to learn from you and the good examples that you can bring from other countries. So this is an important thing that you need to keep in mind because Vietnam, for me, this is about policies. This, uh, the ease of doing business is about how you value, understand the, uh, these policies and how policies are made and implemented in Vietnam. So what you will hear when you hear about the Vietnam pharma market, I heard the same thing before I came here, I can assure you. Vietnam is complex. Vietnam is complex. It's very difficult to do business. It's a growing economy, but be prepared to suffer. Now, don't hear this. Forget about this. What I would suggest is you should remember that Vietnam is resilient. This is a resilient economy. These are resilient people. What you see here are real pictures from our manufacturing sites in uh, Saigon High Tech Park. During the lockdown, which was imposed by the military. So there was military on the streets in July, August, and part of uh, September last year. We were not allowed to go out. We were not allowed to go shopping. There was no restaurant. So it was a very, very strict lockdown. But our people, Voluntarily, they decided to come and keep our manufacturing operations running. So these are tents that you see. People were living in these tents. We bought washing machines so that they can take care of their clothing. Uh, we bought new recreational activity options for them. Uh, we, we put uh, some sports activities. We put Wi-Fi routers so that they could be in contact with their, uh, with their families. But this is Vietnamese people because they are very cognizant. They are very proud of the purpose of working. And here they are manufacturing medicines which will be used to save lives. So this is, this is what happened here. Same thing in the hospitals, same things in the pharmacies, same things among the lay people in order that uh, they were trying to run uh, the country and trying to drive the economy. So one thing if I would explain and, um, and uh, tell one thing about Vietnam, I would say Vietnam is resilient. The second thing you need to keep in mind, Vietnam is transforming. Vietnam of today is not the Vietnam of two years ago that I have come to. So you have to keep in mind that you need to anticipate the future and you need to adapt and go with the flow and ideally stay one step ahead. So this is the fastest growing internet economy in, in Southeast Asia. It will be in the next 10 years. And, uh, E-commerce is growing, including, including our markets in the, in the pharmaceuticals market. 
pharmacy chains, they are growing unbelievably compared to several years ago. Uh, we had one pharmacy chain which was running 10 stores. The same pharmacy chain today is running 1,000 stores. And they are doing uh, you know, online ordering for their, uh, for their customers, for their patients. So this is, this is a country which is moving very, very fast. Some of the e-commerce platforms that were established only two years ago, now they are worth tens and maybe a hundred million, uh, million dollars and they are growing and they are changing the landscape. Same on financial tech, same on educational technology. So this in itself is telling us that Vietnam is a market which is going to continue to grow and uh, even if the policies, legislations are coming from behind, these things happen, and then the country adapts itself to it. Because in a seemingly uh, socialist-looking uh, country, actually, there is a lot of dynamism in the private segment. So what we do, we changed our structure also. Previously, this was a very classical uh, country where you had to go visit doctors face to face. You had to hire a lot of uh, sales reps uh, to promote your product. Nowadays, it's mostly on uh, different uh, digital platforms, Zoom and other dedicated digital platforms that we use. Vietnam has its own, uh, I would say, uh, instant messaging system uh, called uh, Zalo, which is only in a few countries, but everybody uses Zalo. Now the doctors are using Zalo. So if you use Zalo, if you are ahead of the competition using this kind of platforms, then you are always one step ahead. And uh, I'm very happy because Sanofi has been elected as the most active uh, pharmaceutical company in the digital space by Ipsos last year. Uh, we are doing a lot of this and uh, classical things that we were doing to drive the business in the past, including logistics, including distribution, including promotion, including continued medical education. It is working in very different ways. So you need to be prepared to adapt and move fast uh, with the market. Now the headwinds. Uh, we always talk about headwinds. So registration of uh, if any one of you is coming from a pharmaceutical company or startup biotech who is planning to come here, be prepared that registration takes a very long time. Time to patient in other countries is usually two years. In Vietnam, it's almost eight years. The procurement and reimbursement system is also quite complex. Reimbursement cycle takes every five years. So this is going, you will have to wait a lot for your new products before you can put them into government, uh, government hospitals. Also intellectual property, this is much better after the signing of the free trade agreement, but still there is room to, there is things to desire on an ongoing basis here. So all of these things, it can look a little bit scary uh, at the beginning, but this openness of dialogue of the authorities, if you can do, a good frequency uh, dialogue and a proper advocacy uh, for your um, for your business, then you will notice that the government listens. They have an intent to improve. They have an intent to change things because they are aware of what they have in hand. This is a dynamic economy, young population, resilient population, resilient country. They need to they need to adapt their laws in accordance so that the growth is going to continue and this is going to be a very very big. Uh, emerging country in the very near future. Uh, local partnerships, it helps a lot. So some creating of some joint venture or some, uh, some distribution partnership, some promotional partnership. If you come with this, this always helps, especially if you do it with a local company uh, to your, uh, your long-term long prospects. And finally, local production. Local production is very important. Pharmaceutical companies, we are more and more pushed to do local production. Uh, Sanofi is the one uh, which has the largest facility actually uh, in the country. Uh, but my feeling is if you come here, you need to do, you need to contemplate some sort of technology transfer or some, some uh, local industrial footprint, some collaboration maybe with a local manufacturing company in order to have a strong position in the country. Maybe most importantly, and my last message to all of you is Engagement and advocacy is key, key. There are things, limited things that you can do on your own. Whichever industry, whichever, whichever sector you come from, you should be part of an association because associations really work well uh, in Vietnam because of this, uh, this approach of government to, um, to dialogue. And be part of an association 
And uh, it may seemingly look difficult at the beginning that, uh, that doing business maybe is not that easy in Vietnam, but once you get the hold of it, and if you are part of an advocacy group, you will see that uh, the doors will open and you will do uh, business much more easily as uh, initially uh, compared to uh, what you feared. That's everything that I wanted to say. I will be looking forward to answering any questions. Thank you very much.